Hello everyone, today we're going to be expanding on our caching discussion we've been having recently by creating a top three articles widget based on the number of views that the articles have. This is also going to pull from some of the other stuff we've covered, such as scopes, and we're just going to package that all up into a neat little uh, presentable thing. The way we're going to be doing this is by creating a scope for our models that will do essentially just a database query. That database query will get our uh, articles based on the number of views. We're then going to cache the IDs of those articles specifically so that we can later retrieve just those three articles. In the case where this is a more advanced query, this would save us some overhead. We would still have to retrieve the IDs for reasons that are explained in this uh, edge guide right here where they uh, mention not to store the uh, instances of active record objects uh, because the instant could change and the attributes could differ or the records could be deleted. So you could end up in a situation where maybe you have a, let's say, uh, someone posts an obscene article to the website, you then go to delete this, uh, but in the time the article's been up, it's you know, blown up in popularity, of course, because controversy drives clicks. Uh, so you go to clear it and then maybe your cache is set to only update once every 12 hours. Uh, it may have that entire instance cached and you could end up in a situation where maybe uh, your your front page has something obscene on it for like a 12 hour period. Obviously, you wouldn't want that. Of course, this is an extreme example, but I think that's sort of what they were going for here with the edge guides in particular. So instead, they recommend storing the IDs and retrieving those IDs instead. So that's what we're going to be doing here. To actually do the uh, like the, the caching of the top three, it's pretty easy. We're just going to go ahead and create a new uh, project. We'll say Rails new video, and then we'll go ahead and CD into it and run the code dot. For the styling here, we're just using the Bootstrap 5 CDN. Of course, you can use uh, dash J ES build dash C Bootstrap in your Rails new command uh, to skip needing to do this. Uh, it's just, in this case, I think it's better if we just kind of gloss over the bootstrap stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit control plus a couple times to increase the font size and full screen this. And then we'll come over to our app, our views and our application.html.erb file. Inside of this application.html.erb file, we're gonna copy the bootstrap 5 CSS CDN link. And then we're gonna grab the JavaScript bundle right here and just paste that in. We'll go ahead and we'll save both of these. And now we're pretty much done inside of this file. Inside of our gem file at the bottom, we're just going to add the faker gem. This is just for our, uh, our seeding our database. Ideally, you'd want to put it in like the development block, but I prefer to keep them at the bottom so people can see where they exist at. And then we can go ahead and run a bundle command. After we run this bundle command, we can then go ahead and generate a scaffold. For this, we'll say Rails G scaffold. Uh, we'll call them articles, give each article a title and a body of type text and some views of type integer. Go ahead and save that. Now, at this point, you might be tempted to come into your app, your controllers, your articles controller inside of your show, do a at article dot uh, increment the, uh, the views or something, something to this effect. Uh, this is fine, but it's not going to make testing this uh, very easy. Because we're going to be seeding the database with thousands of views, it's going to be pretty hard to refresh this in the span of like a minute, enough times for one of these to overtake the other. So instead, we're going to hit Control Shift T inside of our uh, Windows terminal. Then we can type PWD, copy this, and we can CD into this directory just by doing that and that'll take us right into the same directory. Now we can run our Rails server over here, and in this one, we can run a Rails C to uh, mess with the environment. And in here, we'll run a couple commands to increment some of these post views so we can test this. That's just a bit of an aside. Uh, if you trust me that this works, then you don't have to do that, of course. Or you can quickly stop your server, enter a Rails console, run these two commands, and then start your Rails server again. Uh, but okay, now let's take a look at how we're going to do this. To actually do this, we're going to come into our models and our article.rb. Inside of our article.rb file, we're going to create a scope. We'll call it top three. You can, of course, change this. Just make sure you change uh, some of the other stuff as well. Our order here will be views and descending with a limit of three. So again, if you change this to top five or top 10, make sure you change this number as well. But this gives us a scope. We can then use this scope wherever we would like. So let's go ahead and let's create a controller 
pages home to create a home page or home action. You can then come into our config and our routes.rb and we'll just set the root to be the pages controller and the home action. We can then do a rails db colon migrate command to migrate our database. Then we can come into db and our seeds file right here uh, to do our article creation. We'll create 10 articles. For each of these, we'll just say article.create and then we'll pass in a title with a body and then the views should just be a random number between like zero and a, th a thousand, right? Something along those lines. Uh, and then that's good. So now we can go ahead and do a rails db colon seed command, just like this. And I just want to point out if you ever need to run this uh, like reset, you can just do a db colon reset. I personally prefer to use migrate and seed because I'd rather you just learn about reset on your own time uh, and just understand exactly what you're doing. But of course, these commands do work. So if we run a Rails C real quick, we can just do a article.count and we can see there's 10 articles. So we do article.first and we can see the first article has 566 views. So this seems to be working just fine. I'll hit control D to exit out of here and F11 to clear this and then control L to clear the console. Uh, okay, so that gives us that. Let's go ahead and let's run a Rails S in this window and come to our home page real quick. If we come to our home page, we'll see that nothing seems to happen. The reason for that is we still have to come into our controllers and our pages controller. Inside of our pages controller, this is where we want to set up that logic. So we're going to start with a top three article IDs is equal to rails.cache.fetch. And then we name this whatever we would like. I'm going to call this top three article uh, IDs. Sure, why not? I'll set the expires in to be one dot minutes. You can, of course, change this to like it suggested 12 dot hours or something. Really depends on what you want. I'm going to do one dot minutes just because this makes it easier to test. Then we have a do and an end block right here. For this, we want to do an article dot top three, which is our scope right here. So when we create a scope that has a name like this, we can then use it just by calling article dot whatever that name is. Then we want to pluck the IDs from this so that we're only caching the IDs. And then we just say at top three articles equals article dot find for those top three articles. Now at this point, we can go ahead and create the pages logic. So come into our pages in our homepage and on our homepage, we can set up some uh, CSS for us. This is going to be largely copy pasted, but uh, I'll just kind of outline a little bit of what we're going to be doing here. We're going to do a container around everything. We then have this P tag at the bottom. And inside of this P tag is going to be our top three articles. So what we can do here is we can just paste these in. This is what it's going to look like. Again, it's a little bit much, but hopefully you can forgive me for that. Uh, let me just do this. So it's a little bit more readable, something like this. So what we have is a container of MT-5, which I'm going to get rid of. That was just an extra copy paste. Uh, we have this div with a class of row. We have a top three articles dot each do article. So we're iterating through each of those. And then for each of those, we uh, tell it to have a uh, column size of four. Again, columns are 12 in, in Bootstrap. So four means you're going to have three uh, columns that are four wide each. Uh, and then this is just a margin bottom of four to give it some padding. Uh, we then create the cards, the card body, the card title. We put in the article title in the article text. We just put the ID in the views. And in the footer, we just create a link to the article. At the bottom here, we would then have the uh, rest of the content of the page, right? So we might say something like, here's where the rest of my homepage would go. We can then go ahead and uh, refresh our homepage. Let me zoom into 150. And now we can see these things right here. Uh, if we want these to be visible on more screen sizes, we can change this from a large to a MD-4. Uh, and now it'll work when I'm zoomed in 150%. So we can see here we have the 985 views, 939 and 927. Intuitively, that makes sense. We already saw that one of the other ones had like 500 views. So we kind of expect these to be higher, right? But okay, we have these now. What, what did we actually accomplish here? Well, you can see that we uh, pluck the uh, IDs and we load the articles. If we refresh the page, you'll see this continues to happen. So even if we come down here, we refresh, we hit F11. You can see every single time we are plucking the IDs and then we're loading the articles. Why is this? Well, if you'll recall from the uh, video the other day, we still have to run a Rails dev colon cache to enable our developer cache. If we now run a Rails S, 
and we refresh this page. I'm going to hit enter here so we can see if we refresh, we'll see the initial pluck happens right here and the select articles happens. But now watch what happens when I refresh. I'm going to go ahead and refresh right here and you'll see, oops, you'll see that this first one here had the select articles for the pluck and then it does the select articles based on the ID. In this one, we're only hitting the database once though. I can come in here again and I can refresh and you'll see the same thing happens because we're still running off of this single cache. Now, what happens if we update one of these, these posts? For that, we're gonna come into our other tab, we're gonna Rails C. We're gonna have two commands we're gonna run here, uh, assuming I can find them, uh, but this has to work for that. I think it's not that one. Uh, it's going to be a uh, article equals article.order by views and descending, we limit by one, and then we offset by five. Uh, in this case, we want to offset by three uh, because we're using the top three. And then we grab the first one of those. So if we check this article, it has 894 views, which means it's probably pretty close to this one right here. After we do that, we can then call article.increment the views and we can increment the uh, article order, use descending, limit of one, first views, and we just add it to this number. So this number is gonna get a lot larger, uh, but it'll make it one of the top uh, viewed articles. So instead of running this right now, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh one more time so that this one right here does that pluck again. So we now have one minute. In that minute, I'm gonna go ahead and run this uh, article increment command. That will increment it and set it to 1879. Uh, but now if we come over here and we refresh, you'll see this still has 985 here. If I hit enter down here, you can see we're still only selecting this article. This will not change until we hit that uh, minute expiration for our cache. Because remember, we told this thing that it should expire in one minute. Uh, so it's going to adhere to that. This means that in this time period, let's say you have like a 24 hour period where you want the top views to be whatever was the top at you know, 12 at night or whatever, uh, you don't have to worry about this changing all the time and being real time and constantly hitting your database. The only thing you're really doing here is just selecting these three articles. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to wait a minute. So I've just refreshed and we can see we now have the uh, article with an ID of eight that has 1800 views as number one. The previous number one is now number two and the previous number two is now number three. So this is all working as you would expect it to. And there's a lot of other areas where you can apply these uh, caching strategies too. Uh, again, this is still coming off of that same edge guide. This is just specifically for low level caching as opposed to what we were doing previously, which was the fragment caching right here. Uh, so there's other ways to use the cache depending on what you're interested in. I highly recommend, again, checking out this edge guide. There's a whole bunch of useful stuff in here. I'll have a link to it in the video description. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. So hopefully this was informative and helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.